Cheers, what it do? Mm. <laughs> Yo, what's good? Welcome to week two, day two of Muse 360. Um, hope y'all enjoyed the film, the hip hop years. Um, I like it because, you know, it gives us um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It gives us a, a bit about the culture, introduces us to Cool Herc, Bam. Uh, Flash, you know, uh, Grandmaster Kaz of the Cold Crush Brothers, a lot of, you know, early pioneers, Jazzy, uh, Jazzy J, the DJ Jazzy J. This is Spanky Davis, the Wonder Chug, by the way. Doggy. Um, anyways, uh, my teaching assistant. Um, and then it takes us through to Sugar Hill Gang, where we get to hear about all, all of that and uh, how people sort of, you know, the cultural members uh, viewed uh, Sugar Hill Gang and uh, Rapper's Delight. <laughs> I don't know why you're shaking, man. Uh, anyways, um, and it takes us into songs, uh, Rapture by Blondie, and kind of ends us there in that area where we have uh, Fab Five Freddy and Grandmaster Flash uh, talking about that song. Um, so it gets us from the culture, uh, the hip-hop culture, which is, you know, totally DJ centric where the DJ was like the most important, you know, cog, I guess the cog in the wheel, if you want to say, uh, of the culture, everything relied on them. Um, MCs rhymed over DJs cutting up breaks, you know? And so if your DJ had the dope breaks and the dope skills, um, you know, it helped you as an, M as an MC, you relied on them. They had the system, you know, um, and that lasted for a good six years, 1973 to 1979. And then, you know, once uh, Rapper's Delight by Sugar Hill Gang took off, it was kind of the, uh, the end of the culture, you know, so to speak. So um, in, in many ways, you know, uh, because it became about selling records. It became about uh, making, making, making records and the jams kind of the live element died out. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're, uh, I'm going to talk about disco rap, um, which is probably one of my least favorite genres or subgenres uh, within hip hop music. But you know, you gotta you gotta understand it and have a grasp of it uh, because it's a very important movement. It represents our movement from MC, you know, live improvisational. Um, and, you know, routines and, you know, freestyling and everything, um, live performance to, you know, writing songs uh, for a record, um, you know, with the intent of writing records, not with uh, writing rhymes necessarily. Um, and so, you know, it's really when hip hop becomes commodified as rap, um, which is what we're going to talk about today. Disco rap. Um, so we had you listen to a good group, a grip of songs, okay? Um, Rapper's Delight, uh, Super Rappin', Rappin' and Rockin' the House, Spoon and Rap, um, The Breaks. These are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up, break down. Uh, new Rap Language, classic, and then Rapture by, by Blondie, which does stick out uh, for many reasons, right? We have a, a white female um you know we have uh, a new wave band like a post sort of punk band that's that had some rapping um you know and i i think it's easy real easy to um talk about cultural appropriation um and the politics of that in that instance um you know but if you kind of see in the film it was kind of like a joke you know it was supposed to be kind of funny and end up being kind of like a big a big song but it did in, in some ways, um, aside from, you know, the, the issues of, of appropriation, uh, you know, it really um, sort of brought that type of music in the most inauthentic of ways uh, to, to white audiences. So it did have an important function in terms of like, here's a music video on, on, uh, on MTV and it has rapping in it. And you know, no one had re really ever heard that for unless you were in the tri-state area, right? Like uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and then Philadelphia, Pennsylvania uh, area. Okay, so just like if you wanna think of like 
What's the similarity in a lot of these songs? Well, most of these songs interpolated uh, disco hits. So what they did is there was no more DJs. Bands replayed, you know, songs that sounded like current disco hits or that had that vibe. And they tried to actually recreate what the DJs were doing. So, you know, melodically you have a lot of sort of, um, you know, happy sounding uh, melodies, you know, um, because these are supposed to be party records, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, fun uh, part, kind of party records, you know. Um, rhythmically, you know, the tempo of these are all literally 114 beats per minute, 115 beats per minute. So they're in that actual range of a lot of the early break beats uh, as well. Um, but this was also largely done because these records were aimed to be literally disco records uh, played in discotheques. And that's why they're like 15 minutes long. That's why it's very repetitive. I mean, because literally disco records as they were made for as, as you know, music genre and disco rap were those cocaine records. They were records for people, um, you know, to bump some rails and, you know, dance in euphoria for 15 minutes to a song, you know? Um, so it kind of had that. And these were more adult songs. So, you know, hip hop as a culture represents, you know, something, uh, a youth culture, right? And the discos were always about adults, you know, for, for at least from like a lot of the hip hop uh, pioneers perspective, you know, they weren't allowed to get into the discotheques or even DJ there. So they made their own, you know, did their own park jam and eventually did their, you know, really did their own thing. Um, you know, uh, but once they got older, you know, they became adults and it's like that became like the logical kind of step in, in some ways. Um, the flow of the raps, very basic, very basic one, two, three, four, um, you know, rhyming everything with a door, um, giving you the rhymes you never heard before, you know, it's the funky four plus one more, whatever it is, uh, you know, it's very basic, very, very, very basic. Um, rhymes and flows like very very just on beat no in between like uh hits in the beat you know etc lyrical content primarily um bragging boasting you know about skills um and skills with the ladies primarily you know um again uh I mean, you can hear there's a little that's glossy, like these songs are glossier, they're not super gritty, um, you know, and again, because it's the intended market, the intended vibe uh, of them, which are discotheques. 